the free. We're back in northern Saskatchewan chasing after trophy sized rainbow trout. Except this time it is cold and there's snow. There's white stuff everywhere. Hey man, that's so man! Uh, no surprise there, I guess, for being up north, don't you know? Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we did some winter camping this weekend, a buddy and I, along with Remy. And. Yeah. Seems like a scrapper. It didn't seem very big when I saw it. Saw but I could have just saw the see the tail. Oh man, it's a feisty. It's not big. I think it's gonna be perfect for. It's gonna be an eater. Ooh, man, it's so feisty. Holy moly. Ooh, nice female. She keeps flipping all around. There we go. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Beautiful female. Look at that. Wow. And that spoon, eh? On the spoon, just smashed it. Nice. Beautiful female. Look you at have that. A grub on there? Look at the colors. Yeah, two grubs. Thanks. Look at the water boatman. Oh yeah. There'll be lots of them. Cool. Awesome. Right. And it's about eleven o'clock now. So it's amazing about northern Saskatchewan in the winter is you can see that the sun isn't really risen over the trees like I'm still in the shade over here uh, but I just wanted to explain a little bit about our setup here and so essentially the shack is on six feet of water right there and a little bit towards us is a point the point kind of comes out like this it comes back in and like so and uh, I'm, we're on basically on either side of this point now I'm sitting in about three feet of water here uh, which we haven't caught any fish this shallow this is the the common depth that I, I usually fish for stock trout uh, this lake is a little bit unique it's got a very high uh, algal bloom in it uh, so the water clarity is not very good at all which is uncommon for stock trout lakes usually the water clarity is really good uh, so it does seem like they're out a bit deeper it seems like right around the six foot mark here is good um, I'm gonna give this probably like five more minutes uh, in shallow and I'll go back out to my farthest hole which is uh, nine feet of water out there. Give that a try for about 20 minutes and then go back to the shack. Uh, it's still, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Red flash and then I... Oh. Oh, so oh okay. Oh. I saw this red flash and I was like, ooh, fishy. <laughs> <laughs> and, then I, and then I jigged it and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> it gets the people going. I don't think we're going to be able to get over there. Do you, do you got, it, got it under control? Yeah, I should. Okay. I just want to move my sore out of the way so it doesn't get wet. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we're sitting here just talking, and then your rod just bends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I look down, and I'm like, well, that's a red mark. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, cool, and then I jigged it once, and it was like, boom. Oh, there it is. It's a chunk here, that's for sure. Is it a female? Nope. <laughs> no way. It's male. Little kite, eh? See the little black spot? Yeah. That's nice. crazy. There you go. Good fish for the camera. Yeah. Cool. Beautiful. Let him go. Good little guy. All right, so that just about does it for today. Uh, we caught a lot of nice trout today. Uh, like our average size was pretty high. I'd say around the 18 to 19 inch mark. What do you think, Kyle? Yeah, about that 18 to 20 kind of thing. Yeah. Inch. Yep, solid. Okay. Yeah, how many trout do you think we caught today? Probably iced, probably like eight or nine, probably I'd say. Yeah, so I mean, pretty good. Uh, we had a north wind come what was it probably around noon i suppose yeah noon one maybe yeah and ever since then like it blew in some cold air it just seemed like the trout kind of got lethargic like we caught one or two after that but uh the one and when we had a we marked quite a few we had a tank come in that we were chasing for like a half an hour <laughs> yeah that's got to be a big fish that's, that's the one that we came for right there yeah yeah it must. no no small trout's ever gonna do that like come in and just sit there and look at it you know yeah. coming in like it was a really solid mark but the way that it was acting like it, it it wasn't moving very quickly and it was just kind of sitting there hanging out which is just a to me is a sign it's a big fish That's yeah a limp down deep yeah it's a big one yeah so we definitely had our chance at the potential 15 pounder that we've all been dreaming of uh but today was not the day so yeah it was a fun day uh it's definitely getting cold uh, so I have Remy in the shack here, uh, just keep an eye on him in the night so that he doesn't get too cold. Uh, the way that I usually do it is I put down my, uh, waterproof layer. So I put it on a Gore-Tex layer as you know, his body heat warms up the ground. It, it protects him from getting wet. I put a wool blanket down and then, uh, some sort of, uh, additional layering. Like this time I just use my bibs for him to lay on and then he has two winter jackets on it's going to probably get down like we don't have phone signal so we don't know exactly but it'll probably get down to about negative 20 degrees celsius uh tonight uh, which is about zero degrees fahrenheit so pretty chilly i don't usually like to camp with remy that that cold but uh the forecast was wrong uh they were only calling for the lowest of the lows like at negative 15 degrees celsius so uh, that's usually the cutoff point for me, uh, for Remy, like he usually just gets too uncomfortable in the night, uh, when it gets below negative 15 degrees Celsius, but, uh, he should be okay. I'll just keep an eye on him throughout the night. And as you can see, we weren't able to have the wood stove in the camas tent. We just didn't have enough room with the two cots and then Remy as well. So we just have the propane burner, uh, that'll go out shortly here. We would definitely won't be running propane throughout the night just way too dangerous to do that uh so just we'll just be keeping warm in the sleeping bag and we're gonna hit it again early in the morning uh before sun up like an hour and a half before sun up we should be fishing and uh just hope for hope for a big one and rise and shine Remy. of day two uh it's really cold outside uh, it's probably below negative 20 uh, zero degrees fahrenheit so we're limited to be fishing into the shack for the morning hopefully once the sun comes up uh it'll warm up so that we can actually do some hole hopping we're not marking a whole lot this morning we got out about an hour before uh daylight and now the sun's just coming up uh, we're still not marking anything uh no real bites or anything like that so it's been kind of a slow morning uh, it seems like that cold front really slowed them down uh, so 
So hopefully as things kind of warm up today, maybe, potentially, possibly, could be, kind of, sort of, maybe, we'll catch a fish. Hopefully, maybe, sort of, kind of, it'll be big. Is it still uh, on? So. Yeah. Phone thing. It's off. Oh, it's still there. This is a good fish, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice fish, huh? Yep, that's a nice fish. This is a good fish. Yep, it's a nice fish. Can I get that bell off at all? Yeah, if you uh, just twist it. Uh, it's the left hand thread. You just get in that grommetal. Come on. There you go. Wait. This is a good fish. I think your drake's pretty weak, though. I don't like playing. Yeah, I don't play with it too much. I don't much. like playing around with it too much. Yeah. Something to do after we get this fish, but yeah. Yeah, it's not a giant, but it's still a decent fish. Yeah, here, hold on, hold on. Yeah, go, go. He's uh, trying to back out of the hole. See him? Oh. Yeah. So you gotta try to coerce his head up or or his tail. Either way. That's a fat oh. female. It's my goal to change the way people think about fatness. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not saying it, Rash. Okay. That's a. Oh, nice. <laughs> beautiful, man. Here, I'll, I'll get the net. We'll put it in the live wall right away. Oh. I don't know. Probably like four Uh, so with the net, it's six point five. Oh. So, we'll weigh the net after. I'm pretty yeah. sure the net's about 1.4. Sure. So, so you have a five pounder? Heck yeah. I'll get a tape on it quick. Just do a rough fast man. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. 22? 22 is a four. Nice fish. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me. Good? Nope. Okay, my hands are frozen. <laughs> Extremely. You're all. <laughs> Extremely frozen. Nice fish. Beautiful, man. Here All right. Go. Yep, go ahead. There you go. Give us a little kick. And she's good. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Wow. Nice fish. Right off the bat, man. And we're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let's go do that again. Would you mind if I mention that it's your first first time winter camping? Sure, go for okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Don't make me sound like a total noob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was actually my buddy's first winter camping trip, and he did really well. Like, uh, he had some hard lessons to learn, which I feel like everybody that kind of starts off winter camping does. I know I sure did. Uh, mostly about, you know, proper ways to use sleeping bags, um, about insulation from the ground, even when you're using cots, uh, having a little bit extra padding from like a thermorest or something like that really helps out a lot. So those kinds of things, he actually had to learn out the hard way, which is a bummer, uh, but there's no better way to learn, I feel like, because he'll never forget those lessons. I know I sure didn't. Uh, what, having a miserable night, shivering cold at night will uh, make you remember to uh, either never go winter camping, which you may do, uh, or uh, when you do go winter camping, to really be precautious about uh, before you go to bed so you don't wake up cold. We learned a lot about the lake. Both of us, my friend and I, have never winter fished this lake before. And so we were testing some spots out and you know, luckily we got onto the trout right away, which was just fantastic. And I really don't think uh, moving around would have helped a lot. It may have helped a little bit. Uh, we were finding that we were catching a, a bunch of males, like immature males. So uh, potentially, if we had moved to a different spot, maybe there's an area where the, the big females are feeding or even the bigger males. Um, but that'll be for another trip. 
uh, we're heading out and I appreciate all the views I appreciate all the subscriptions all the likes all the comments it really helps a guy out and it really helps me support growing this channel so you, that I can make more great content so please if you haven't please subscribe like this video uh, comment if you'd like as always Keep living high, wild, and free.